When I first drove the A-Class prototype a couple of years ago in Stuttgart, German engineers were calling it revolutionary. But then engineers have applied the revolutionary label to their products ever since the dawn of the motor industry. So let's look back through the history books at those cars that really have changed the face of motoring. Henry Ford's Model T, the first car to be built on a moving production line and bringing mobility to America's masses. The Volkswagen Beetle, air-cooled, flat-four engine, rear-mounted, independent suspension, unitary body again when chassis were all the rage, and flat-out motoring for the German masses on their new autobahns. And from Italy came the problem. How do you get Mama, Papa and their children into the smallest possible and the most economical package? The answer there, Fiat's inimitable 500. And finally, Alex Isagonis's Marvel, the Mini, drawn literally on the back of a fag packet with its transverse engine gearbox in the sump. Now for me, a seminal car, and I think one of the best looking shapes of all time, is the Citroen Traction Avant. Just consider a monocoque body with no chassis, independent front suspension, torsion bars all round. It's low, fast, sleek, excellent steering and road holding. And that in 1934. That's what I call a landmark. Will the A-Class be in that league? Are we seeing the start of a design revolution where all engines disappear under the floorboards and all chassis become sandwich construction? Personally, I don't think so. Engineers will only adopt this sort of layout if they can afford to charge Mercedes prices. I don't think it'll be a failure, but like the old Hillman Imp, it'll be a car that engineers admire but don't imitate.